Hello everyone. First of all, welcome to 2020. Man, a decade has already gone by. And 2019 was a, an amazing year, but I believe that 2020 is going to be even greater. Um, so, my name is Pedro Mota. Thanks so much for tuning into my channel. And I'm um, really passionate about my family, photography, videography, audio, music, um, education. And um, uh, we're going to start 2020 with a video on how to use a volume pedal. Even though there are a ton of reviews out there on how to use this wonderful device, I thought that I could bring my own approach. And I'm no expert on electronics or anything like that. I'm gonna try my best to describe what's inside and of course, how to use it in the ways that I do. A volume pedal is basically a potentiometer placed in a floor enclosure. They come in different sizes and with different features. There's pedals that come in a wah combo. There's other pedals that are active, other pedals that are passive and um, they come in different ways. I've seen volume pedals that come with a roller and other ones that come in a form of slider, which is really cool. Um, but in their basic form, uh, they, all they do is just to bring the volume down and volume up. How is that achieved? By basically letting the voltage go to ground if you don't want any volume and let the voltage pass from one side to the other one by bypassing the ground if you want a full volume. Here in my hands, I have the Ernie Ball DP Junior, which is a 250K version, which is for passive instruments. This is a passive pedal, and its construction is really simple, of course. Uh, we have the aluminum enclosure, as well, it has a string, which is connected to a spring, and then it goes into uh, the volume pot. It has an input, an output, and a tuner app. And we're gonna see in the different combinations how we can actually use it to achieve different results. Okay, so let's get started. So the common way that I use a volume pedal is, of course, as a volume pedal. Just a reference guys, we're gonna be using an Ibanez 540R as well the FM210R by Fender. I love Pedal Deluxe or uh, Brown Face Deluxe. Uh, the VFE Distortion 3 and an Ape Delay by Bombs Electric. And of course together with our Ernie Ball uh, VP Junior volume pedal. One thing worth mentioning is that effects and amps are gonna react differently depending on where we put the volume pedal. If I decide to put the volume pedal in between my guitar and effects or my guitar and amp, if I go down in volume and if I play it in the cleanest way possible, basically my signal is gonna retain the same character. It doesn't matter where I go. However, if I engage my drive pedals or if I have an amplifier with distortion, as I go down, the character of this pedal start, starts to fade a little bit. And this happens because we are not sending enough voltage into the pedal for it to actually drive the signal. That's why in the full volume, it sounds great. But as we go down, it starts to actually sound a little bit softer or sweeter. However, if we put a volume pedal after the drives or in the effects loop of an amplifier, what's gonna happen is the full voltage from a guitar is gonna go into the pedals or into the amplifier. And then the process signal is gonna go through the volume pedal. So it doesn't matter if you go up or down in volume, the character of the signal is still gonna remain the same. Now with effects such as delay and reverb, 
putting the volume pedal before them is gonna allow the signal to have trails. Putting a volume pedal after a delay or a reverb is going to allow for that delay or that reverb to be cut right away if we go into the hill position. One of my favorite ways to use a volume pedal is as a wet and dry controller or a parallel mode. And basically what this means is that it's going to allow me to dial in the amount of reverb or delay that I want to put in the signal. Just as a side note, I'm not going to be using the ape delay for this particular example because it doesn't give me a full wet mix. So instead I'm going to use the Quadrant Audio Mirror by Alexander. And um, as you can see it has the knob that says mix. So this is full dry and this is full wet. So I'm going to be using it in that position. Okay. So basically here we have the line of the guitar. Uh, it goes straight into overdrive, then into distortion or overdrive 2, whatever you have for your drive section. Volume pedal, this drives go straight into the input of the volume pedal and then uh, the volume pedal is going to split the signal into two parts. So one which is the guitar goes out from the tuner output that we have right here on top. It goes into the channel number one of the passive mixer that I have here um, and it has to be on full volume so we can have the full on dry signal. Uh, then the second uh, part that we're going to do is plug our delay into the output of the volume pedal. Then the delay is going to have to be on full mix. Why? Because you don't want any of the dry signal. You don't want to combine this dry signal plus the dry signal from the pedal. We're going to have the full wet mix signal. Um, and then from there it goes straight into the second channel of the passive mixer. And of course I have it at a lower volume because I don't want the repetitions to be really loud or to go louder than the actual dry mix. Uh, or Sorry, my dry signal. And then, um, yeah, I can basically control how much of the delay I want to put right here. So let's listen to it. example I'm going to use two volume pedals, one to control the dynamics of my play and the other one to control the amount of delay that I want.
Well guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe, like or comment. Uh, let me know your comments about either you know this video was really useful for you or if there's any other ways they use a volume pedal, maybe use it as a Christmas ornament or uh, <laughs> I don't know, for something else. Uh, anyways, in the meantime, have a great 2020. See you until next video. Adios.